Can you see that sheep walls over there? Like that's just in mine, that's my boundary. That wall that goes along there, down along there. Up over that hill, around there, and comes down. There's a couple of sheep over there. The wall's just behind that, goes down, down. And it, that's the same wall there, down to there. That, it, all the area inside that, up around there. Every piece of this is owned or tenanted by one farmer or another. So it's all somebody probably that they're trying to make a living off of. Ross. Winter, it's flipping cold, and it's usually very wet. This is the first sort of break in rain we've had for weeks, so we feed a lot of hay. It's up on at this high, the grass doesn't grow, so it's hard. But these take the pressure off a bit because they're Dartmoors, they're native breeds bred for Dartmoor, so. They're as hardy as they can come. They're experts to live in here in the winter. But the only thing is, because they are so hardy and wild, they're a pain in the backside to get them to do what you want them to do. It's tough. I mean, you've got the weather to contend with plus the terrain, and really, you need to be born and bred. You know, people come into it, and then they probably make a good job after a few years, but it just doesn't happen. It's not like walking out into a field and uh, tending your stock up there. There's a different tale on the moor, you know? From time to time, we get reasonable amounts of snow, and it makes the place look beautiful and pretty and that. But for us, it, it can be hard work. We've got animals to feed, and you know, just getting around the place when there's a lot of snow about. Back in 62, 63, you know, we, I never went to school till March because, you know, we couldn't go nowhere. <laughs> Most of the people are pretty good. It's just a few, you know, if you get a nice weekend, you get a lot of people out skiing if there's a bit of snow about, and they use what they want to, and then they just leave everything, what they don't want, in the gateways, and off they go. Winter is the hardest time for me, really, because, like, you know, the cows are in, you've got to hay them, bed them, feed them. Before Christmas, when it's dark at about 4 o'clock, that's when it's a bit depressing then, but not long after Christmas, the old evenings get a little bit better and better, and it goes on and on and on steadily, getting better and better. So as the days begin to get longer in the spring, it's a very interesting feeling. It's a mixture of excitement and relief. Um, you become very excited for, for what's to come with lambing and the, the year that lies ahead and the warmer weather. And subject to the winter's going well, you feel relieved at the thought that you've got your flocks through the winter and hopefully you haven't run out of hay and hopefully you haven't run out of silage and, um, and you survived what the, the, you know, the worst that Dartmoor has to throw at you. And you're looking for the little signs you know, like the first swallow that comes along. I know they always say one swallow don't make a summer, but the, the, the spring of the year, the swallow comes, cuckoo comes. There's little signs that, ah. Then you start thinking about, you know, turning the cows and calves out or calving on the moor and all the rest of it. And lambing kicks in in the middle of April. So there's all sorts of things in your mind coming on for the, that time of year. lamb outside so basically all we're doing is we're picking up the ewes and lambs and we're putting them in, into fresh fields with fresh grass and it's absolutely perfect um, which is in total contrast to last year where we had the beast from the east and it was snowing it was freezing we had freezing rain it was a total nightmare so these lambs they're not very old they're still uh, they're still a little bit wet they haven't dried off yet so um, when we put them in the other field in a minute, we'll put them in a nice quiet corner. In an hour or so time, they'll be nice and dry and um, up and away. As 
swaling is a thing that needs doing, but it gets rid of all the, the waste gorse and dead grass that's built. And especially now that there's nowhere near so much stock on the moors as there used to be, if people don't keep on doing a little bit sometime, somebody's going to have a mishap one day and the whole lot's going to go. But it's got so technical these days, you know, you'll have people there watching and you can only burn a certain size area. It's not too easy as it used to be, but it does do a good job when you do it. This piece we're burning today, it's uh, not so big as we like to burn perhaps, but uh, it's an a, a impenetrable piece of course, that needs burning and regenerate growth for the cattle and sheep and ponies to come here and graze later on in the year. And um, it's part of our uh, management of the common. This is the one that was born this morning over here. They're all within about, a, you know, a, only a, the oldest one's only about a week old. Yeah. Come on, the, the ones with white faces are Hereford Cross, but the, uh, the other ones are all red, they're the South Devons. A South Devon cow from down Totnes would be twice as big as that cow because of the ground where it's born and lives like. Yeah. These are much hardier, but nowhere near as big. When you live up on the moors like this, you have to breed your own replacements because you can't go to Exeter on a Friday and buy something that will live here. It's just not tough enough. It's got to be born and bred here to live here. Come on. Flora and I, uh, we farm sheep on Dartmoor. We don't have any cattle or any ponies. We have the three native Dartmoor longwolves, the white-faced Dartmoor, the grey-faced Dartmoor and the Devon and Cornwall longwolf. Well, we sort of farm without a farm. That's, that's the best way of putting it. One tiny <coughs> yard from the 1600s. Um, and everything else is just sort of bodged with hurdles and a good sheepdog. Yeah. <laughs> and we just, we rent pastures wherever there's pastures to rent that we can afford, we'll rent it and mm. we'll travel to it. So we, we're sort of like mobile farmers in a way. Mm. We have to go where the land comes up because the land is very scarce and very hard to, to rent, as, particularly as new entrants. So we have to rent it where we can, which happens to be everywhere at the moment. Mm. So there's a lot of driving. <laughs> Dartmoor is the way Dartmoor is because of farming. It's not because it's wild. All the animals are farmers' animals. The landscape's been managed to accommodate those animals. So for Dartmoor to stay as it is, you've got to value the people farming within it, because that's the only reason the landscape looks the way it is. So anything that can be done to sort of recognise that, you know, little things like shutting gates. We got footpaths on the farm and from time to time we do get people leave gates open. And when you get animals that, you know, they sometimes can escape onto roads and then you have accidents and that sort of thing. Um, and even animals getting in with, the, you know, say some cattle, young cattle getting in with a bull or something. And, you know, and then you obviously you have problems with young animals getting pregnant and that sort of thing. So people really need to be mindful of shutting gates and leaving it as they find it. See, all these lambs aren't meant to be in here. They're meant to be in the barn. But they escaped in the night. And then the, the landlord let them back in here, which is better than being on the road. But this is a bit of a pain in the ass now. He'll go left now. Moss, Moss, come by. Come by. Oh, no, he's going right. There we are. He's meant to go left. He's still only a baby. He's still learning. Change of plan. So it would seem. Moss, here, here, here. Oh, gosh. Because you're taking the fleece off, then you realise that actually some of the sheep have, uh, you know, been bitten by dogs. You got uh, dog bites and that that are, you know, healed up or half healed up. Well, what I say is, like, on a good year, we lose 10 sheep through dogs, and on a bad year, it's 20 or, or even more. It's a wicked, really, how they um, let their dogs run sometimes, people that don't come up very often. It's the people that come up like on those bank holiday Mondays when the weather's nice, and they haven't been up since, you know, summer last year, and like the dogs haven't seen no sheep, and, you know, and that's when you get the trouble. I love seeing people going over the moor, and, and I really, really love them enjoying the landscape. If they're 
walking their dog off the lead and their dog is good and that's not a problem that's great however the next person walking along behind you will see your dog off the lead and assume they can do the same and there's a ch good chance their dog might not be so good you know people come here to enjoy themselves but you know it is our livelihood at the end of the day and to lose a sheep that's been killed by a dog you know you know that's that's money you know out of our pocket It can be quite isolated, you know, you're on your own most of the time, but um, it's a nice treat to go to market sometimes. The majority of our cattle and the sheep go to Tavistock. We've been going there for years and years and years. You, know, you look forward to seeing the same people you know, have a chat and that. Kenny's a good mate of mine. We have a good old chat, we don't see each other that much, and it's good to catch up and just to let go. And if you have a reasonable sale like we've had today, it's even better. So, yeah, it's good to be out. Summertime for us is a, a busy time. It's always nice to get into the harvest and uh, get started and get it done. You know, it's our uh, winter feed for all the animals that we've got. Um, so we, you know, we always try and make as much as we possibly can um, to see us through to the next spring. The days are so long then, you, know, you can be out at 9, 10 o'clock and you can still see out there in the daylight to do something. It's a steady, gradual progress. The days get longer, and then come to the autumn, it starts going the other way again. I love all the season, like, you know, I just love it here. That's the main thing, you know, we get some bad weather, we get some good weather, like, but, you know, I'm happy to be here, whatever the weather is, really. I just like it here. If I'm a little bit tired and a little bit grumpy and I feel like I've had enough, like, you know, I go for a walk. I like to go sort of high up when I fancy going for a walk for a bit of a break. You walk to the top of the tour, something like that, and I always feel better the time I come back. And that's true, that is. Now, towards the latter part of the autumn, you know, the, the cattle are coming in, um, the sheep have come off the moor and putting the rams in. I think autumn is the most beautiful time of the year with the autumn colours, the leaves, and all that sort of thing. So, yeah, it's, it's a lovely time of year. I suppose being born on Dartmoor and, and living on Dartmoor uh, uh, and the knowledge that, that we got, you know, you know, we, we, Dartmoor is in us, you know, we are part of Dartmoor. But the day I couldn't lean on a gate or a door and look at the stock, it was the day I'd give up. Because it's a bit more than just, uh, it's a business, of course it's a business, it's a bit more than that, quite a bit more, a lot of pride in it. And like I say, just to look over them, look at them and, you know, think, well, that's not looking too bad or perhaps that one isn't looking so good as it should do. But yes. It's just nice to stand and stand and stare, I think they say. They stand and stare sometimes. If I had my life over again, I'd do exactly the same again. We're not ever going to be rich farming up there, but it's what we do. Well, it's my way of life, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know nothing else, really. Yeah. Do you want to know anything? No, I don't know, not really, no. You know, I got, like I said, I got no phone, no nothing, no gadgets or nothing like that. But I, but I don't want them anyway. Yeah. Got everything you need? Yeah. Well, I'm happy with what I got, let's put it away. I've always wanted to be a farmer. I never want to do anything else. I think you know you're happy in your life when you could think that you could win £10 million more and you wouldn't change a thing. I might get a coat that's a bit thicker, but apart from that, I wouldn't really change that much. Um, it's a fantastic way of life, I love it. It's rewarding. You're working with nature, you're working with the environment, you're working with these amazing animals um, to maintain a landscape, to maintain a national park. And in, in my very own small way, I am helping to maintain this national asset for future generations to enjoy. <laughs>